computer. So hi everybody, Steve Katie here in uh, Ohio at Bowling Green State University with uh, uh, Teo Stiegler, who's uh, helping with the technical side of things here. Thank you, Teo. He's Teo is a graduate of Bowling Green State University and also change. Oh. And um, we are here as a community. And we'll be meeting uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and our goal is to be a community to explore all aspects of teaching online and to go where we need to go with some structure. And as it goes, we'll take more form to help us out. So uh, we, it might be a little bumpy at first and then we'll go from there, but we're gonna try to use the tools to teach the tools and give you all some ideas. So to begin, we're gonna, we're going to jump into um, a poll. I'm going to ask you uh, a question here. Uh, first poll here is, let me see, I got to, yeah. is I'm going to ask you this one. It's my first time playing with it. So what is your experience level uh, with teaching online courses? A lot of experience, a moderate amount of experience, a little experience, no experience at all, and like, oh my God, what's going on here? So I'm just curious where, where you all are. Now, in doing this poll, um, uh, are you all seeing the poll live on your screen? Yeah, okay, good, good, yeah. So we got 80% voted, so we have a really high vote, vote, uh, voter rate, so that's good. So we're looking at, uh, uh, we, are, we are strong on the, we have a lot of people with no experience to little, little experience, we have, and we have a little bit more, we have probably 64, 65% with the little to no experience, and then we have about 23% with moderate and 14% with a lot. And we wanna leverage those people with a lot of experience. Uh, if you have tips and tricks and you wanna intervene, you can raise your hand, you can say something in the chat, Teo's watching the chat, you can just interrupt and say, hey, I got something, I got something, so that we can all help. We can share screens. We might ask you to share your screen so that we can show. We might ask you to share your screen so we can see what you're wrestling with to help you as well. So we'll do whatever we need to as we go. Okay, so here's our next next one. I oh, there, there, it says share the results. And you can see the results there. A lot, moderate, little, and no experience is the big vote getter for the day. Um, now the next poll is, I'm really curious what features you're interested in. You should be able to pick uh, all the, are there too, like Canvas discussion boards, how to set them up and manage them. Modules, how do you set up modules and have a flow between content areas? How do you work in the Canvas group, setting up groups to using the group homepage features, stuff like that. What about uh, recording lectures? How do you record lectures that you want to be made make available online? Um, how about hosting live online sessions like this with uh, your students and or office hours online? I do that a lot. You know, different ways of holding online sessions. Uh, Canvas communications. I think one of the things is how do you communicate and get everybody knowing to pay attention to? You know, I for example, I don't find email is good for working with class. I find that using the learning management system is the best way to stay and keep everybody in a platform. But how do you use like Canvas communications like inbox or announcements? Blackboard has similar features for those of you that are using Blackboard. I'll showcase Canvas and talk about that, but I can also speak to Blackboard because I have experience in that. Testing, how to set up tests. Zoom breakout groups, which you're gonna experience in just a minute. How do you do breakout groups? And, um, uh, and then how do you do Canvas calendar and how can you leverage Canvas calendar or the calendar that's built in the learning management system. So are you all able to see, can you all see the poll? You haven't launched it yet, Steve. Uh, I, I did. Nope. You want me to? Uh, I, I did. So I'm going to end polling on it and uh, yep. relaunch polling. Continue. Did it show up now? Now everyone should be able to see it. Yeah, it didn't, I did, it was, it, for some reason, didn't show up the last oh, time. It, it, it's interesting for, for Steve and I to notice as we do this this morning that I think the vast increase of Zoom traffic uh, seems to be causing some hiccups, um, you know, maybe with the poll not launching, even though Steve did. Uh, there's a couple of questions in the chat on this uh, poll feature specifically. Um, as you are setting up a meeting, 
or scheduling the meeting, one of the features is that you can uh, establish polls like the ones that Steve shared here. Um, if you have a co-host identified, they can't vote in it, but they can, for example, help launch the poll. So if uh, Steve and I had gone through an extensive session in designing this, then maybe he would have said, okay, Teo, when I talk about this feature, you need to go ahead and launch the poll so people can see it. Um, again, that's an interactive piece. And then once the poll is ended, there are options to share it uh, on screen and so forth. Um, Zoom is pretty deep in terms of the features that you can enable. And they do a really good job in providing video tutorials that walk you through those feature sets. So I welcome you to, to go to the zoom.us website. And if you're interested in a specific, specific feature set, if you click on resources, one of the uh, drop down buttons is video tutorials. And you can watch instructive videos on just about any, well, not just about any, on any of the features that they offer in the various formats. And as you're voting, people are still voting. We, uh, if you could in the chat, tell me where you are located. And uh, what's the question that you brought today? Your most important, if you could have the question answered today, it would help you uh, in a significant way. So where are you physically? And, uh, um, and, and, and you know, are you, at, I'm in Ohio at Bowling Green State University. And the question I bring today that would make all the difference is how can I help you all? and stay on point with helping you with things that matter. Um, but what's the question that would help you, it might, whatever it might be. So I'd love to hear where you are and what's the question you bring. And while you're doing that, filling out the poll, a couple, one person asked, Jessica said, what is Canvas? And Canvas is a online learning management system. There are two, or there are several, uh, not two main ones, but there are two, two that I have experience with. There's Moodle, that I don't have a lot of experience with, but there's also Blackboard and Canvas. Those are three pretty big ones. And I think you all have some like Schoolology for K through 12 and some other learning management systems. Our school. Yeah. So um, when you hear people talk about LMS systems, Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, uh, yeah. they're all. Yeah. That's what LMS they means learning management system. So that's what that means. So I'd love to continue to hear where, where, where are you and what's the question you bring today that if it was answered, it would make all the difference for you personally. And uh, so we can see here, the, we're gonna end the polling. If anybody has any more, does anybody wanna vote on any of the uh, items on the poll? And those that have just arrived, if you can, we would really greatly appreciate you turning on your video so that we can all see each other and engage. Uh, today's session is also going to uh, involve you all talking in small groups to each other. We're going to demonstrate that, and that seems to be one feature that people want to know about as well. So it's important that you're able to meet your group and talk with them and be prepared to engage and unmute and mute. So make sure you can mute and unmute. You'll see your little microphone or phone. If you could unmute it and mute it just to check it, make sure you're able to mute and unmute so you can talk. So play with that feature. You'll see a little button there with a uh, a little red line and you can just click and unmute and mute. You have a little dashboard that's at the bottom of your screen that you can see that gives you some features there. Um, you can see uh, different things uh, on the screen. So if you just check and look around to make sure you're, you're good and the rest of you can vote, I'd appreciate it. So I'm gonna end polling and move into uh, what people are interested in is hosting live online sessions. You're seeing that now, so we're, showing you that and you're learning a lot. And again, we're recording. So there's a variety of little things that we talked about that we'll focus on. But we'll pick like the most important top two topics and we'll focus on those today. And then on Thursday, we'll focus on another set of topics and come back to topics if people wanna go back over them. So we'll always have, we'll start out with new topics each day and we'll like pick one new one and then we'll go to the ones that are continuously people have questions around. We may talk about recording lectures every single time for, you know, for the whole spring semester and how to do it. But we would, we would talk about something else before that on the next one and so forth. So we'll make sure we're getting new stuff out and we're talking about new things at the beginning. We'll have a breakout room. We'll also do the what's the question you have. So if you bring your question, we, uh, Teo's going to be doing that. And Carol Gorlick's here. And she's also with Nexus for Change. So Carol is also um, uh, very well trained in uh, learning design. So Carol, if you could play a role of watch, looking in the chat room to see what questions are so we can, I can come to you and say, what are the questions and what we need to make sure we're answering, if you can monitor the chat room. 
while Taya is doing his part. So um, that would be great. And I oftentimes will be in a session like this and I'll have my students up and I'll say, okay, Dennis, I want you to watch the chat room, okay? And you're gonna come in and summarize what you see. And I might say, Dennis, you and Nancy do that. And I literally will we'll pause at some point and I'll say, Dennis, what, what do you see going in the chat room? And you'll summarize and then I'll say, Nancy, what do you see? Because sometimes two people looking at the same chat room will see different things. And so I'll just have the two of them summarize and bring questions in. And then we'll keep moving on from there. So I engage the students in the learning uh, oftentimes. So I'm gonna share the results here. So you can see hosting live sessions is the big vote getter. Zoom breakout groups is also in recording lectures. And so we'll definitely, those are hot topics along with, you can see uh, a variety of these other topics seem to be also pretty, pretty important. So let's go to um, starting out with the, you know, online sessions. And I'm gonna start with uh, just, oh, just kind of a, some preliminary stuff on online sessions. And we're gonna weave online sessions with breakout groups and have that discussion. So we're gonna weave those two together today to start off with that. And um, so in general, we had a few things we talked about. And um, if anybody has anything they wanna share, please continue to type it in the chat room. If you wanna remember something, like a note, type it in the chat room, because we'll send the chat out to everybody. So you can, so just type like, oh, that was a good point. I wanna remember that. Oh, that was a good point. You just say good point or something if you want. We could create a learning document, but I think just leaving the chat room, having just everything in there and you can type in a good point, a, a link, something you wanna remember, put your notes in the chat room and uh, we'll be sending the chat out as well to you all to, um, to have for later. So a couple things. Online sessions, you come in, uh, you can see that I'm paying attention to my background. I'm look, kind of looking at that. Second, I have doors that I try to keep things quiet and I have a little communication since I'm doing it at home or if it's at an office, a way of putting a note on the door or something, don't come in, I'm in recording or I'm on a webinar. And so I kind of set those things up. I'm thinking about what's behind me um so that i'm just kind of then i actually try to sometimes i can use the board there and write big letters or something or i can use the screen if i need to but really i can share my screen and do so much with it the other thing that i have in setting up is i have multiple monitors so the way i've got it set up in my office is like this so i got that you all there then i got a big screen there and then i got a screen there so I got one big screen, one monitor, and one monitor. You don't have to have that, but what I will suggest is that if you're able to have an extra monitor, one, it makes all the difference in terms of managing things. Because what I can do right now, uh, and so what I can do right now is I can have on this screen things I'm getting, gonna talk with you about, and on this screen I have all of you. So I'm looking at all of you, I have the camera there, and then I can, I can have stuff I'm gonna share. So two screens really does help if you're able to do that. The other thing is, is I come in early and I try to make sure everybody knows to get on mute. That's the other thing. Make sure everybody knows to mute themselves and how to do the mute on and off. And I'm prepared, if I hear noise, I just mute people. So I might have to mute someone if they don't know how to turn off their mute or something that's background noise. So I'm managing that. And so I get a little bit of everything kind of set up, say hi to people, make sure people are having what they need. Uh, and uh, at that point, once we get in, um, I'm prepared to record. You can record to the cloud or you can record to your computer. It's a pre personal preference on the size of your computer. And then you can easily take your recordings and put your recordings on a playlist in YouTube. And you can make the YouTube playlist unlisted. That way, if you, want, if you have a session that you wanna share a link with people, but you don't want everybody to find it, you can just pet, make it unlisted, and then you just share that link with your group, and it's private to your group if they have the link. So that's a nice way to do that. And what's nice about YouTube is it, it, it does convert uh, over to closed captioning, so people, can, so people can read it if they need to. And that's the same thing for lecture capture as well, if you put them on YouTube and you can create a playlist. So I get all that kind of thing set up. Now I wanna pause and say, before we get started, what are some of our experienced users out there? What are some other tips, not during the session, but in getting set up and kind of the beginning of the session before you start? What are some things that you think are important to do?
since you just mentioned closed captioning, there is a setting in Zoom that allows you to enable that depending on uh, your recording capability to the cloud uh, and the kind of account that you have, um, you can record closed captioning or Zoom will record closed captioning for you for mm -hmm. sharing after the fact. Does anybody have anything else I'll add? Remember also get a co-host if you can. It doesn't have to be an experienced person. They don't have to, you don't have to do a lot of training. You can just make a co-host so that you have a backup. Um, there's a, yeah, Gordon? Hey, um, one of the things that, uh, I like to do as a facilitator is to use the mute option that Zoom presents to the host uh, and allow people to unmute themselves. So in one click, in like two clicks, I can solve any sort of audio background noise issues. Just click mute and click the box to allow them to unmute themselves. Right. That's, right. Something that's, really that's a really good point. You can just mute everybody instantly and then they can unmute. It doesn't permanently mute them. It just resets it to a mute st state. That's good. That's a good point. And um, anybody else have anything? One of the ground. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, do, do you pay, do you pay the, the monthly subscription to Zoom? Or I do. I do. You can. Do it for free. Yeah. Yep. So great. Forty minutes. Yep. Like. All of the features that we're talking about so are you, available. What, what additional uh, services with the monthly subscription? So Greg, I think I heard you. You're a little bit um, slow. Your connection's a little bit slow, but I'm. I, I think I heard you say that. <laughs> Greg, could you type your question in the thing? But I'm going to answer it, I think, because I'm only hearing just little bits. You can sign up for a free subscription. You get 40 minutes uh, free. You can do everything that we're pretty much doing with the 40 minutes. And yes. what you can do is tell, you can use the free subscription. I use a, I pay for it. And I just find it makes my life a lot easier to do that for all the stuff I do. But if you needed 40 minutes, you can do it in 40 minutes. You can just tell everybody, hey, it's going to end in 40 minutes. Come back and go away and come back. And we'll be back here again. So you, then you have another 40 minutes. So you basically have a pause at 40 minutes with the free version. I do know that Zoom, I heard or read, Zoom is making it available for people, teachers, and so forth for free in classes. I don't know how they're doing it, but I've read something that they are doing that. Anybody have anything else they want to? Um, There's a question about recording in the chat. Yes, you can record with the free subscription. You can cloud record with the free subscription. So when you have the free subscription, you have to record the session to your hard drive on your computer. But yes, you do have that record option. Uh, I'd like to say one more thing, Steve. Yeah. I um, when what we have found to be really helpful is to. Uh, actually have someone on uh, like a staff position to actually facilitate to bridge the facilitator to the learner so that the the teacher can focus on teaching and learning and yeah. not get so mired in all of that i i um I just think it's it's really critical i've been on a couple of um and I see it's something that you guys do very well you sort of tag team um, but i've been on um I was in a hybrid experience last week where some students were online and some were live in the room and not having that person to bridge those two communities. Yeah, um, it was just it was not ideal. Right. So what I have found Gordon is is I don't have that luxury all the time. And I have worked on the skill set for being present clicking sharing some of the duties with the students so that I can make it all work in a free environment or in a very low support environment because a lot of people are, just don't have it. So I think in an ideal world, I get Teo and he and I are tag team and then I know Carol and so forth. But I also try to teach my students how to do some of these things because then they're learning the skill sets. And there's a few that are really engaged and active. And so I just pick the ones that are most interested. I invite them. I might even hold a, a session with them separately give them some extra credit 
and say, you're going to be my co-host for class, you know, for sessions and really kind of gauge them in it. Right. So, so train them, train them up and then use them that way. So I think those are some good points, but I think it's a really good point. Really good point that you bring. And that's the There's fun one. part of it. If we, if we give the students a chance to be co-partners with us and managing the learning experience, it is so cool. And, and some of the ones that are a little bit more advanced or quick or still or motivated, they want a little bit of extra stuff to do anyway, right? So it's kind of nice to be able to, to find creative ways to make the whole experience a community managed experience. When you are in that setting where you're looking to manage the, the bulk of this engagement on your own, I highly, highly recommend that you do it on a multiple screen setup. Now you don't have to have quite Steve setup that he showed you where he has, you know, three big screens. Uh, a lot of us have a flat screen TV with an HDMI input and a laptop with an HDMI output. Connect the two, that way you can, for example, let's say you're sh uh, sharing a, a set of slides, you can put those on your laptop screen and put the Zoom engagement pieces on, on the TV in front of you. Um, another piece that came up here in the, uh, in the chat, um, where did it go? Uh, I'll come back to that because I lost the, the question I was going to answer. Yeah, but so multi-screen setups will really, really help you and you can just drag and drop the participant view on one screen and then maybe the chat in another corner if you're managing and, and monitoring multiple things. Great. And Teo, if you could get ready. So we, um, so I'm just looking here. I'm going to want to put in, we're going to do a breakout room here. And um, so if you could help me, I'm going to, uh, if you are you able to do the breakout room from your end? Um, let me see. Okay, so so um, I think the only other thing is you know with the starting up and setting up uh, is to talk to the students about the value of the process and that it's a it's okay for it to be like it is right now. That it's 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 not a Broadway show. It's not a perfect production, a TV production, that, that is, it's about us and it's more real and it's actually uh, very rich and tangible, uh, that, we're, that they're also learning skills that they can go into an interview and they can say, yes, I've worked in online environments and I have been in groups and teams and I've learned how to do uh, and, and have been a part of this. So it's also a nice way to say, hey, you're getting another added benefit with this with the class. So, uh, so Steve, as a co-host, I do not have access to the creating the breakout rooms. Uh, the question I was going to answer was about uh, people with low bandwidth. Uh, Steve and I have both shared with you that we really encourage you to have your video on and going. Sometimes if you have a spotty Wi-Fi connection, having that individual turn their video off while they're speaking to give more bandwidth to the audio can be helpful. So Gregory, for example, when you were asking a question earlier and we had trouble hearing you, sometimes let me turn my video off and see if you can hear me uh, can help. Uh, but there is a multitude of parameters that are affected by that, but that's something certainly to try. Okay. So right now uh, it's odd. It's not showing me the feature to put you all in breakout groups and I'm not sure why it's not showing it. Do you have the little more on the side, Steve? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not it's showing under that. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Nope, we're gonna have to check that. If you can check and see if they're not, maybe they're limit, maybe they're having some channel cha challenges with some feature. Um, so we're gonna do breakout groups in just a second, but before we do that, the other hot topic is how to do recorded sessions, right? So a lot of people wanna know how to do lectures and how to record lectures. So let's talk about the next topic. And, um, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to hear all voices, and that's why I wanted to do breakout rooms. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my view on, on my approach and some ideas on how you can record lectures and put them up and and then I'm going to pause and for those of you that have done it before to share your best practices. So now we're going to focus on how to turn a lecture, uh, take a lecture online and some different ways to do that. Uh, I'd like to broadly step back and just talk about a couple categories and ways to do it. One way to do it is to do it with a screen capture. You create your slides that you normally have, and uh, you then have slides that you bring up and you screen capture it. The second way to do it 
is you can hold a Zoom meeting with your class and invite people to come, share your lecture, record the lecture, and you've got a live studio audience while you're doing your lecture and you just save the recording from doing your live session on like Zoom or another session. Those are two, two general strategies. Does anybody have any other ways in which they like to do screen capture for lectures? Or not just screen capture, but how to record lectures and to make them available online. Greg, you really are um, del very delayed. You might have to turn your video off. Try turning your video off, and that'll save some bandwidth, and we may hear you. The other option, Greg, is to on the audio on the bottom. So Greg, so on the audio on yeah. the bottom, click on phone, dial in with your phone and keep the video going. And that, that's the other way to do it. So click on the audio yeah, on the bottom. Little... Yeah, so you'll see audio, click it, I don't it'll see option. Audio. What's that? Next to, next to your mm -hmm. microphone is a little up arrow. If you click on that up arrow next to your microphone, there is an option, I believe, switch to phone audio. Yeah. That when would you allow click, you to. Yeah, once you click that, Greg, you go, you go away, then you just dial the number it gives you. Okay. And then you can use video. Steve, if you want to make me the host, I can figure out the breakout rooms if you'd like. Okay. Uh, so I have to make you the host, not the co-host? Yeah, I don't think as co-host I have, unless it's a Zoom issue today, I don't think as co-host I have access to the breakout rooms to creating them. Okay, I'm making you the host right now. You are the host. All right, hostess, host with the most. All right, so um, so two ways to do uh, screen screen capture for your lectures. Two ways. Uh, one way is to do a screen capture on your own using a screen screen capture software, like Screencast-O-Matic. If you go to Wikipedia and type screen capture, and, and we can put the link in there. If you go to Wikipedia and type in screen capture, they have a page in there that lists. 30 or 40 of the screen captures, and it rates them and talks about all of them. It gives you lots of different uh, ones to take a look at. So Wikipedia does a nice, has a nice list of them. Uh, I use Screencast-O-Matic. Some people use Camtasia. Sometimes there are others that you can use. The second way to do it is hold Zoom. And what you do is you invite students that can come uh, for a session as a live studio audience, and you can then do that. So like for the semester, you might be like thinking, how do I queue up all of these lectures? Well, maybe don't worry about that as much as, say on Monday at 12, I'm gonna do the XYZ lecture. Anybody can join me. Come on and join me at noon. If you can't, no worries, we're gonna record it and then we'll make it available later that day. So the students will have lecture for that week. So you're now spreading out your workload. And, and all you have to do is do Zoom, you get the recording, you upload it to YouTube, put it in a playlist on YouTube. I'm gonna show you all this. Once you got it in a playlist on YouTube, you can send the recording out for each lecture and say, watch this lecture, but they can also go to the playlist and you can make the playlist unlisted and they can go to the playlist and see all your lectures as you're building them out so they don't get lost. And you can put that in your homepage on your learning management system or those kinds of things. And so, um, and so you got different ways to, to make it. So that's the, Either way works because all both of them recording what's called an MP4 format and you upload it. I'm going to show you how to do it here now. And so, so I am going to share my screen. So this is how it would happen. Let's say we were doing it right now. We're basically doing a class lecture and I got you all here. I picked a time and I start out and say, Hey everybody, Steve Katie here with our XYZ class. I sometimes do it evergreen, which means I don't mention the time of year or the specific class so that I can use that lecture at a later time. So that's called evergreen and recording. Like in, when they do recordings, 
Sometimes they don't want people, they want to use the recording in future times. So they use evergreen. Sometimes I will do content agnostic, which means that I do the recording in a way that it doesn't depend on another recording. So that whatever I'm sharing in that video, that session, doesn't require them to see the next one or the one app before it in order to do that. It depends. Sometimes they build. You might say, you're going to have to watch the previous one to be okay today. So if you're here and you haven't watched uh, session one, make sure you go back and watch session one or you're going to be lost a little bit, you know, and so forth. So you just got to make sure that they know what you're doing in terms of how dependent that particular lecture is on the previous one and that they'll need it for the next one. So you can, that's called content agnostic or content dependent. Right. So you, you just got to decide you want your content for that lecture to be dependent or agnostic. The other thing is, do you care if it's evergreen or not? Evergreen means they don't know what class, what time, what year, what semester, so that that lecture can be used again next time. So you just want to watch those two things and decide on, on how you do your lecture so that you can either use it later or not. Or you can use it later, but just tell people this was from last year. Um, <clears throat> they just will need to know that. So that's the two things you want to know before you go in. Then you go to share screen and I go to share my screen and up pops the screen. And I still see you all right here. I'm looking at you all, it changes that. And now you see my screen. Now, this is a, this is a set of slides from my, I taught the last class live this weekend with my uh, master's program. And this is slides that I use during class. I just pulled these, this up for our residency. And so I might go here and I go, I'll go view and I'll go to pres presentation mode. And so now it's recording and I got this here and I'd say, and I might've done a little introduction with the class and said, hello, I can choose to hit the recording and stop recording. So you can actually stop recording, start your recording. And then you can also take an edit out stuff. You know, when you take your recording, it's easy to, you can in YouTube editor, cut off the front end, the back end, and some other stuff. You can do some editing, minor editing, once you learn that. But essentially, we're here. And so I'm talking to you through and saying, you know, here's our topic for the day. And here's uh, a little video that I got embedded that I can show. And I can click a, a little video and play this. It's uh, a little video. How do I know? A lot of people, when they think of the phrase, how do I know, they always want to put the what behind it. How do I know what I'm supposed to do? I love this video if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's a wonderful video. Um, and then uh, go to the next slide and then kind of have them go through some discussion. You know, I could do that with the class or I could skip this and just be doing lecture, straight lecture. And I can go through and, you know, kind of going through some, some different things. And after I, as I go through and talk through different things, I can have, you know, the slides can be, you know, build it, build slides with moving parts or not, you know, and so forth. When I'm done, all I have to do is hit stop share and we're back. And then I can hit stop record. And then I've got the recording and then I can take that and I can upload it to YouTube. And I'm going to show you how to upload to YouTube anything. So I'll show you that here. Um, so what happened is, is if I want to upload to YouTube, So let me show you my screen. If I go here, I go videos, go into, I click here and go to YouTube and go to my videos. So in here, I got lots of videos that I have. And you can see lots of students because I do a lot of sessions with my classes. And uh, if I want to, if I want to add a video, um, upload a video right there. I select the MP4 file and I drag the file over in here. So now I'm going to see where is a good MP4 file. Let me see if I, I might, maybe I didn't. Okay. Let me see here. How do I want to do this real quick? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, let me do some skill. I wonder if I can. So if I want to download, yeah, I'm going to download this video. So I'm downloading the MP4. You see the MP4 down at the bottom. I go back into upload, upload a video. 
So I select a file. I can select it from a folder like that and select it. And there's an MP4 right there. Does anybody else have trouble seeing that screen or is it just my connection? The resolution for me is really odd on that screen. Yeah, I can't see, see it, okay? it either. Okay, I cannot so see it very well. Is that your main, your main big screen that you're sharing right now, Steve? Yeah, yeah, you want me to it try might to be, more? Yeah, it might be uh, better. The resolution for Zoom trying to translate your screen might be easier from one so of your I'm smaller do something screens. Here. I'm going to share a different screen. I'm going to stop sharing, share a different screen. So I'm so share. We're, we're discovering live with you that there are some challenges with bandwidth at the moment with Zoom. Um, so, so there, now, now you're seeing a different screen. So now I'm yep. going to bring in this here. Is this better? For me, that is a much better resolution. Anybody else? Does it looks look good. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do this here. I got to I got to do something. I got to So now I'm going to kind of bring this in here. So you see this here. I'm going to select a file. I go down here to here. Select this here this MP4. I select open. It goes here. So now I'm in YouTube and I, I can title it, put a description in. I can then pick a thumbnail. Once it uploads it, you can pick, uh, they give you a couple images to choose from. I can put it in a playlist such as I have my instructional videos. This is an instructional video for my 6015 class. So I wanted it to go in there anyway. I forgot to put it there. So I just put it in the playlist. And they have a link to these instructional videos on my playlist. Is it made for kids? Uh, nope. And that's all they want to know. It doesn't mean anything. Not made for kids doesn't mean bad or it means inappropriate. It means I'm not designing this just for children. Um, and uh, it tells you a little bit more there. So I got all that. I got the link right there, the YouTube link. I can click copy that link. I hit next. I come in here and I look at um, this. Do I want to do anything there? I click next. Then I click here, see where it says public, unlisted or private. I can choose those if it's private. I have to give people permission and access with their email, the YouTube account to access it. I click unlisted and um, I save it. And so now it's 95% processed and it's, it's uploading it and so forth. And then I let it go ahead and upload. I copied the link. One of the things you can do is you can, the link you can see is you can make it a vanity link, a tiny URL. So I'll go to tiny URL, T I N Y, uh, tinyurl.com. And I'll go here and I'll put this, van, this link in here. I'll paste the link in. You see how it's YouTube 50 WBDT2. Da, 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 da. I'll come down and below and I'll say, you know what I want to type? I want to call this 6015 dash uh, two instructive visuals or, or two something, all right? Two dash uh, instructive visuals. That's the title, two instructives. And I, if I can make it shorter, I right? do that and boom. Now I can, now I got this link here. That's a little easier to remember maybe, or I put it out there for somebody to, who's trying to retype it back in. I can do that. Or I can just use the one that YouTube gave me and make a live link in whatever I have. So that's just as, sometimes it's nice to do that um, with things. So now it's, it's, it's doing its own thing here and it'll make it available. Now let me show you a second way to, to do it through Screencast-O-Matic. So I go down here, I'm gonna go out of this, add another, I'm gonna go over to my, these slides. And I go to Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic, you can record for free up to 15 minutes on that. And I think 15-minute lectures are great. If I want to break a lecture into 15-minute increments, that's, uh, it works really well. But you can pay for it, and you get more. And it's not that expensive to get the longer one. And many of us are at institutions that give us other screen recording capabilities. But Screencast-O-Matic is one of them that I like. I click, click Screencast-O-Matic. And up pops this here, and then I hit record. It's launching the recorder, which the recorder looks like this. Yeah, there it goes. 
And I can do a couple things on size. I can say full screen, 780 or 480. So I click 480, that makes it small. Some of you may not like to use the full screen and you just wanna kind of do this. You want it to, you wanna just do this portion of the screen. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Some people may wanna do um, just this portion of the screen right here, like that, okay? And let's say, cause maybe you want to follow your slides along and you wanna transition through them like this, you know? But once you've done that, other, others, you can do it 780, it's bigger, but you can always resize or you can say full screen. And then I got the whole full screen covered. And then I can go like here, I can go view, present. I got the full screen like this. And now all I do is I say, okay, let's record. Hi class, Steve Katie here, and it's Sunday. And I'm gonna walk you through a lecture today on two coffee mugs with smiley faces. And we're going to go through and discuss a variety of topics such as this and such as this and such as this and such as this and such as this. And great lecture. Good talking to you all. Bye for now. So I did that. I hit done. Save and upload. Save it to YouTube. And you, you have your YouTube account. And you basically, when you do it for the first time, it will ask you um, kind of what your YouTube account is. And then you link it. And you allow it. And you click up to YouTube. Loading. I go up here and I click the title. The title is 6015 and it's a test and you know, blah, 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 blah. Right? And, uh, and then I go into um, a description. I can type a description. And then I can privacy, you see public, private or unlisted. I have it unlisted, that means as we know, unlisted means that it's only people I give a link to. You can have a category and so forth, and then I can say publish. It goes through and it starts uploading it. I can copy it, and once it's done, it had a failed to so something happened, it didn't like it, but it'll upload it. And then let me retry it so I can, yeah, so I could continue to retry, continue the background. So what it'll do is it'll pop up. I'm trying to figure out what might be. Yeah, it's not liking. I've had it do this one other time because of antivirus software. But um, I'll copy, let me just retry and copy the link. So I copied the link. So once I copied the link and it uploads, um, what I can do from there is leave this recording so you might not like it. So I can go up there, I can go in and create another link. So if I click here and paste, and if I hit the link, it also says waiting to start, and it's, it'll, it's loading it up to YouTube. But when you, once it's done uploading and buffering it, you'll have that link will work, it'll take you right into it. And then what you can do is you can come in and you find your video in your videos. So you'll have all your videos that you've uploaded and you can take any video and you can make playlists, you can go into playlists, for example, and you can make a playlist, a new playlist, and I can title it My Test Class. And I can create it. And I can also make it unlisted right there. And now I got my test class, I got my playlist, I got it unlisted, and then I can make it available for students and then I can, whenever I have a video, I go into my videos, I can, I can put any video in there, mine or others. So here are a variety of playlists that I have, as you can see. Like, you see a playlist for my 6015 live classes here. And- um, Hi everybody, Steve Katie here with yep. our ORG 6015. That's, so that's my, so I can go to the, here. Hi everybody, Steve Kate. So you can see this here and you can go back and 
you can click on view full playlist. I meant there. You click there, and you can see that I have two play two videos in the playlist. When you give the students the the session, you give them the link to the playlist right here. You click on share. You copy that link. You can give them the link to the playlist, and you just keep adding to the playlist. And how do you add to the playlist? I go back to my library. Any video, I can see a video here, like this one here. Or how do you zoom app from an iPhone? I click on this, and so I would like to show you how to this video I happen to like, and I want to I want to upload. I click on the plus button down here, and I go to my test class, and there it is. I put it in the playlist. So you can manage the playlist pretty easily by creating it, and then you just any video, all you do that you've created or uploaded that you have, you just click on save it to a playlist and you got all these playlists that I've created. You can create a new playlist live and put it in there that way too. And then you let them see their playlist. So let me stop there. And Teo, did you figure out the breakout rooms? I can't hear you, Teo. It, it would help if I unmuted myself when I talk to you. Uh, are they available now in your panel? Uh, let me see here. I'm... No. Okay. Then uh, we probably will have to save it for Thursday because they were not enabled for this session. Okay. Gotcha. That's what happened. Okay. So, so there's that's different a, that's ways in Zoom. Sure. I thought it automatically always gave me the so did i so that's a, maybe a, a, a small teachable moment um there are different ways there's actually a question on how do you set up a session there are many different ways to set up different kinds of sessions in zoom with different feature sets and what steve and i did in order to uh, be able to contact you and have registration options we did a slightly different approach from what steve typically uses and i did not check the box to enable breakout rooms for for this session uh, simple oversight on my part so we'll fix that for thursday so one of the things I want you to do, and I want to make sure that we're checking in with people because we're at the hour mark. So why don't we go to the chat room? So what I'd like to know, what is your takeaway? Um, we're going to be looking at the questions that you had because I, we, I'm sure we didn't answer all the questions that you have. So what I'd love for you to do in the chat room that will be helpful for Thursday is what was your takeaway and what's a question that you still have that you would like to make sure we address? What's a question you leave with? So. What's a takeaway and what's a question you leave with that would be helpful to us? I'm going to go through the chat. Carol, I'm going to ask you to summarize that as we wrap up. Let me pause and just say for those of you that are experienced users and going, taking lectures online, could you all share some of your views on uh, best practices that you have seen and tips for going, taking a lecture online? So, well, Steve, can you, can you hear me now? Is this Yep. Much better. better. Thank you, Greg. Okay. This is Greg. I'm connected to the phone. So I hesitate to even say this because I, I, but I put my lectures online all the time in a really um, sort of dumbed down way. I just upload the PowerPoint and then I upload an audio file. It's an MP4 file, I believe, that I, I just record the, the audio file for, off my phone. And I'll say, okay, on the first slide, you see this. On the second slide, you see that. And I can do that very quickly. And, uh, and, it, and it works really great inside Canvas because Canvas plays the audio file and Canvas plays the PowerPoint too. But that's, nobody else probably wants to do that, but that's a very low tech, easy way to put your uh, lectures online. Okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's another way I hadn't thought about. That's a pretty straightforward way to do it too. Okay. Well, let me pause and see if anybody has any uh, any questions that you want to ask uh, right now as we wrap up for today. Hi, Steve. I have a question. Um, yeah. Will Thursday's session the same as today's? Say it again. Uh, will Thursday's session be the same as today's, or it, it, it's different topics? Uh, we're we're going to, we're going to, one, we're going to do um, a new topic at the beginning of every day, and then we'll go to questions that people have. So today we're kind of figuring it out. It's not, 
today was a, a lot of me talking and addressing the two main topics, but I'd like to be going where people want to ask questions. So on Thursday, we're going to focus on how to do breakout groups. I wanted to do that today because that's a topic. So we're going to talk about briefly, kind of introduce, say hi, and then we'll move right into um, how do we do breakout groups in Zoom. Great. Thank you very much. And how to use that for your class. And then we'll go back and touch on other questions that people may have that might be um, repeated. And then we'll direct people to the previous video, for example, and have a playlist for people to go look at it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. One of the things that came up in the chat that several of you asked was sort of, can we compare contrast like WebEx versus Zoom versus GoToMeeting? Uh, we don't intend to make this a promotional session for Zoom, but that's the platform that for a variety of reasons, um, Steve and, and Nexus for Change have chosen. Um, and so I don't know that um, we are the right people to ask as to, you know, how do they compare? There are think, a lot of resources I, on. May I would, I would just, I want, to, I want to stop and say, we can talk about it next time. And we have people that are on that have used Camtasia, but are all, that do different forms, but have used Zoom, Skype, and also the big blue button on, on WebEx. So we can go ahead and talk about three big ones and be prepared to do, address that. Right. So I would say but, we what I wanted to offer is, yes, what I wanted to offer is that there are a lot of, if you type that question into YouTube, you find a lot of people that have done a nice job in sort of comparing the core and key feature sets uh, between those uh, platforms. The next piece I want to offer is that it really sort of depends on who's your audience and what are they accustomed to using. So it might be that you look at with this particular group of people, they all have experience in WebEx. I'm better off as a facilitator to go in a platform that they already know versus introducing a new one. But that is very uh, dependent on that specific circumstance that you're engaging with. Yeah, yep. I do. Well, I, I learn a ton on YouTube. If I type in the question WebEx versus um, Zoom, I'll get lots of stuff. If I have a very specific how to do a breakout group in Zoom, someone will have done a really nice video on that. It is amazing the number of really good short videos you can have to answer any question that you have. So I'd really strongly recommend that. Uh, and the sure. platform providers themselves, Zoom and GoToMeeting and WebEx all do a really good job and on their support pages offering you video tutorials uh, to steps uh, through some of these steps. So I recommend that you, you seek those out once you've identified a specific question. Great. So um, other questions, anybody have a question before we, we wrap up? We're a little bit over, but want to go ahead and those that do want to ask a question as we wrap up and if anybody wants to say uh, bye, they can say bye, but we'll just make sure we hang out for people that do have questions. We won't run away. We'll stay on a little bit over. Um, and if does anybody have any questions and for those that have to go, we'll be sending out the recording uh, via the link to the playlist for YouTube on this. And we'll send out the chat with notes and questions and other types of things for you. So anybody have any other questions? Okay, Carol, what, do you, what did you see in the uh, chat? Can you tell us a little bit about what you saw in terms of where people are from, all the way through to questions that they have and things like that? You're on mute. Everybody didn't say where they were, but there's a very big concentration in Bowling Green in Ohio. Um, there's one in Huntington Beach, which is near me, and there's some, a couple in New York. Um, the questions, the highest question was the one that Teo just answered with Steve. What's the difference between WebEx and Zoom? Asked by many people in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, is an interesting question that came up a couple of times about the difference in async. How do you use this um, vehicle, but also have async discussions and have strength and push and pull? Um, one person wants to know how to do a Zoom invite, and that might be worth staying on for a few minutes if you want to demo that. Um, and again, Steve and Teo said use YouTube or the Zoom instructions. There are lots of ways to um, do invites. The limited bandwidth came up multiple times. 
But I think that's very interesting because in all the time we've used it, it's a rare event and it's usually individual on somebody's personal bandwidth. So I think that's a byproduct of coronavirus. Um, there were several really significant questions about teaching and how you create um, designs for teaching so that there's good flow. And one I loved was how do you teach piano online? Teo said he's willing to address that. <clears throat> Teo's a musician. And the rest, I think, will come as you get things demonstrated. Yeah, cool. So those are some. Oh, one more that's useful. One, one more that I don't know. Um, can I set up so that students do not hear each other? So one on one, the teacher to a student, as opposed to teacher to group or breakout rooms. Okay, that'll be that'll be worth looking into. I that's don't think one. that's a possibility, but I want to we'll have to look at that. That was the one um, that got me. Yeah. So you would have to use breakout rooms for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you could do is do breakout rooms and put a student in each one of the rooms, but they can't, you can't speak to them all at once. You have to go to into each room. So we got some good questions that we can, we'll talk about next time. But before we leave, I want to make sure the people that are on right now, do you have a question you need answered today that you would like? Because of the questions that Carol mentioned, we'll summarize and concise it and be ready for Thursday to jump into those questions and, and so forth. And we'll direct people to come back to this video on the playlist to see how do you create a video and upload it to YouTube and do the unlisted piece so that we don't repeat that. We'll just give people direction to that and we'll pick up from there. What, um, what do you all have? Does anybody have a question they need answered today that we that, to help you today? So there are many, many thanks. Nancy, I'll work on my Spanish. Donata, Nancy. We have Nancy and uh, she's in at the University of Mexico and got people from all over, really. So, um, okay. So I think uh, we're good for now. Um, we may, I may have to go longer than an hour. I don't know if I want to do that. What do you all think? Should should we go longer than an hour? Just keep it to an hour? Keep it to an hour and just keep checking in and kind of like chipping away at it and see what people have. Okay. It'll be a little messy. I want to do it all and some of the stuff I could take longer, but it looks like you all got a little tip. For those of you that are here if, that I can see, did you get at least a tip or something? One little thing that can help you? Uh, that's all, That's most important. I hate to think that you got here and you didn't get something that you can use like one or two as little good time savers. So I'm glad to see that you got tips and things that will be helpful to you. All right. So we'll be back here on Thursday and we'll get better. I want to get community talking. We're going to do breakout groups to start with on Thursday. We're going to show how to use breakout groups, how to have them go out and do work and bring them back. And I think we can weave in some of these other questions around how do you do asynchronous and set it up for the synchronous and so forth. But here's what I would encourage you all to do. One last challenge. For your, those, you, those of you that have classes, set up a Zoom account. Say, hey, everybody, I'm going to have just a practice session to say hi to you all. Come join me at noon. I don't, I'm going to mess it up. I'm afraid. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm all the above. But come join me and help me kind of play with it and figure out how to do it and start just using your, that's what I do with my students before, come and do a test group with them and say, come and just help me just kind of join me. And all you have to do is you basically, you can create a permanent meeting room that you have uh, with a link and you don't have to, or you can make a scheduled one. There's two different ways to do it. It's really easy. Send the link out to the session, tell them to join you. They show up and you just play with it, talk with them and you all kind of figure it out together. And try one before Thursday just to see if you have any addition. Then we can answer additional questions for you as you try it out. That would be my closing invitation to you all. So with that, I think we're done. Bye for now. And I'll see you, those that can join, see you on, on Thursday.
Take care, everybody.